Let's talk a bit about the basic arithmetic operators that are available in the Cortex-M instruction set. And I want to emphasize that these are just the basic operators. There are more sophisticated operators that we won't have time to talk about today. Of course, we can do addition and subtraction and also something called a reverse subtract. And we'll see why that's important. Multiplication. And for the Cortex-M3 and M4 processors, we can also use division instructions. It's important when you use these arithmetic operators on a computer to keep in mind that a computer can only approximate real-world arithmetic. If you represent an integer as a 16-bit twos complement number, then the largest positive value you can have is 32,767. Adding 1 to that number doesn't give you 32,768. You get minus 32,768 because of a phenomenon called overflow. Whenever you use a finite number of bits to represent a number, there must be a limit to the range of values that can be represented, the precision of those values, or both. Let's start by looking at the addition instruction. The subtraction instruction, SUB, works in essentially the same way as addition, so I'll only mention subtraction when we get to the important differences. Suppose we already have values in registers R0, R3, and R4 as shown here. We can use the three operand form of the add instruction to add the value in R0 to itself and put the result in R1. We will be computing 2 plus 2, which should be pretty easy. And sure enough, we get the correct value in R1. But we can also use the add instruction with an immediate operand if we want to add a small constant value to a register. And fortunately, we find that we get the correct result again. Now remember that addition is commutative, which means that the order of the operations doesn't, operands doesn't matter. A plus B is always equal to B plus A. Subtraction is not commutative, and the standard subtract instruction always subtracts the third operand from the second operand. If you use a two operand form of the subtract instruction, then the result will be equal to the first operand minus the second operand. Since an immediate operand must be the last operand of an instruction, the consequence is that the subtract instruction is only able to subtract an immediate value from a value in a register. Another instruction, the reverse subtract, allows us to get around this limitation. In the three operand form, the second operand is subtracted from the third operand, and the result is stored in the destination register specified by the first operand. With the RSB instruction, we can subtract a value in a register from an immediate value. There's a two operand form of the add instruction, which uses the destination register contents as one of the add ends and overwrites the original value in the destination register with the calculated sum. If we start to work with really large numbers, we can run into the sheep counting problem. Suppose we add two numbers, one of which is about 1 billion and the other is about 1.6 billion. If we interpret the result as a signed twos complement value, then the result is incorrect. We added two large positive numbers and got a negative result. But if we interpret the result as an unsigned value, then the result is correct. So how does the processor know whether you are adding signed or unsigned values? It doesn't. Only you, the programmer, know how to correctly interpret the results of an operation. The processor just does what the processor always does, and if the result is pure nonsense, then it's the programmer's fault. Now let's look at the basic multiply instruction. Multiplication is commutative, like addition, so we don't have to worry about the order of the operands. The multiplication instruction does not allow the use of an immediate operand anyway. Suppose we already have values in the registers as shown here. Using the three operand form of the multiply instruction, we can multiply the values in R0 and R1 and put the result in R2. And we see that the processor has no trouble multiplying 2 times 4. Let's see what happens when we have signed multiplicands. In this example, the value in R3 is negative, and in particular, the value in R3 is equal to the decimal value of minus 240. As we would hope, we get a negative result. One very important consideration when using the basic multiply instruction is that it works like the multiplication operator in most high-level languages in that the data type of the result has the same size as the data type of the operands. 
specifically in this case the multiplicands are both 32-bit words and the result is also a 32-bit value. If you do multiplication with pencil and paper you know that the product has more digits than e either of the multiplicands. So if we multiply two 32-bit values we should expect that the result might need 64 bits. The basic multiply instruction simply discards the upper 32 bits of the product and gives you the bottom 32 bits as the result. Let's see what happens when we multiply two relatively large values. The result of the multiply instruction is a value that is less than either one of the operands, so this is clearly incorrect. The correct value of the product is a really big number, bigger than 2 to the 32nd power. Unfortunately, the upper bits have been discarded and the result we get is grossly incorrect. If you really need to multiply large numbers, the Cortex M3 and M4 have long multiply instructions that return a 64-bit result. But these instructions are much slower than the basic multiplication and they require two registers to hold the result. So you should only use them when necessary. There are two basic instructions to perform division, one for unsigned values and one for signed values. Let's start by looking at the unsigned version. This instruction divides the value in R2 by the value in R0 and puts the result in R3. Since 4 is evenly divided by 2 with no remainder, this is a simple example, and we hope to get the exactly correct result, which we do. However, we need to remember that these are integer divisions, and they work like the integer division in most high-level languages. Any remainder from the division is simply discarded no rounding is performed. So what happens when we divide 4 by 3? In real arithmetic we would expect to get an answer of 1 and 1 third or a quotient of 1 with a remainder of 1. Integer division simply discards the remainder or we would say that the fractional part is simply thrown away. The result of our integer division is therefore just 1. Here's a worst case example. Suppose we divide 3 by 4. The result in real arithmetic is 3 fourths, entirely fractional. Since the fractional part of the result is discarded, we are left with a value of 0. You may conclude at this point that the division instruction is pretty worthless, but we can use a technique called fixed point arithmetic to represent fractional values using integer operators, but that's a topic for another day. Here's an example of the difference between the unsigned and signed division operators. Suppose we consider the value in R6 to be a very large positive value. And notice that I didn't say suppose the value in R6 is unsigned. The contents of a register are not inherently signed or unsigned. It's just our interpretation of the value that matters. Performing an unsigned division gives us a large quotient that happens to be exactly correct. However, if we consider the value in R6 to be assigned two's complement value, then it is a fairly small negative number, minus 256. And performing a sign division instruction gives us a negative result that is numerically much different from the unsigned result. For addition, subtraction, and multiplication, we could use the same instruction for either signed or unsigned operands, and we just had to interpret the result as signed or unsigned, respectively. However, the division operation is performed differently depending on whether the operands are signed or unsigned, so we have to be careful to choose the right version of the instruction. What are the key points about arithmetic? Remember that only addition and subtraction allow an immediate operand. Multiplication and division are only done using register operands. Subtraction is not commutative. The order of the operands matters. So we have two versions of subtraction. The regular subtraction instruction, just SUB, takes the second operand, subtracts the third operand from it, and returns that result in the destination. The reverse subtract instruction, on the other hand, takes the third operand and subtracts the second operand from it putting the value in the destination register. And that's particularly important when you want to use an immediate value as part of a subtraction operation. 
Remember that multiplication is single precision, that only the bottom bits are retained from a double precision result, just like it happens in most high-level languages. And finally, remember that division has both signed and unsigned versions, that you have to use the right one, and that we discard any fractional part of the quotient. That's it for the basic arithmetic operators. Thanks for watching.